So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the PS4 emulator FPPS4. Now, just to let you know, this emulator is still early in development and it doesn't run a lot of games, so don't expect to be playing any AAA games here, such as God of War or Spider-Man. There is a link to the compatibility list in the description below and your games have to be in a PKG file format to be playable with this emulator. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is head on over to 7zip.org, link to this page in the description below. We will be using 7zip to extract our files. Next, we're gonna head on over to github.com, link to this page in the description below, and this is where we're gonna download the FPPS4 emulator. Under version 0.01, .01, you're gonna see FPPS4 zip. Download that. The next thing we're gonna need is Timmy's launcher, also on github.com, link in the description below. Scroll down. Under assets, you'll see launcher.zip. Download that. Next, we're gonna need the nwjs file and you can find that on Timmy Launcher's GitHub page, link in the description below. Once you're here, go ahead and scroll down and under how to install, you'll see download nwjs, go ahead and click on it. We are also gonna need to download the PKG editor, also on github.com, link in the description below, scroll down. Under assets, you're gonna click this first file right here. And the last file you're gonna need is for your PS4 libraries. This download also on github.com, link in the description below, and it's gonna be this first file under assets. Okay, I now have all five files downloaded and saved onto my desktop. Now we're gonna create a new folder, right click, new folder, and we're gonna call it FPPS4. Now go ahead and take that launcher folder and drag it into this new folder. Open the folder, and we're gonna extract the launcher folder inside of the FPPS4 folder. If you already have 7-Zip installed, then go ahead and right click on the folder, go to 7-Zip, and extract here. Now go ahead and open the launcher, which will be this file here. You will see an error message, just go ahead and click OK. Now we're just gonna exit back out. And by doing that, you just created some additional folders that's needed to run this emulator. Okay, now we're gonna open the folder that says MU. Now let's go back up to our FPPS4 file, which is the emulator, and let's open this folder. And we're gonna take this file here, the FPPS4 file, and we're just gonna drag it into the MU folder. This is what it should look like. Let's go back. Now we're gonna take that nwjs file and we're gonna drag this into the fpps4 folder. And we're gonna extract it into this folder. So let's right click on it, go to 7-zip and extract here. Now you wanna look for a folder inside of the fpps4 folder called lib. If you don't see this folder, then go ahead and create this folder, just create a new folder and call it lib. And we're gonna go up to the lib file that we downloaded from GitHub, open it, and we're gonna drag this file here into that lib folder. Let's go back. And now we're gonna open the folder called games. Now what you're gonna wanna do here is create a blank folder for every PS4 ROM you have. I only have one game for testing and that's Sonic Mania. So I'm gonna right click, new folder, and I'm gonna call it Sonic Mania and make sure you name these folders exactly what the game is called. Now let's go up to that PKG editor folder we downloaded from GitHub, and we're gonna right click on it, go to 7-zip, and we're gonna extract to PKG editor. That's gonna give you a new folder, go ahead and open it, and click on PKG editor. Now let's go up to file, open. Go ahead and locate wherever you have your PS4 ROMs on your PC, I have Sonic Mania stored on my desktop. And also you wanna make sure that your PS4 ROMs are in a .pkg format. So I'm gonna select my game and then it should show up in the PKG editor. Now you wanna click on export the GP4 project. Now let's locate that FPPS4 folder. Let's go back into games. And I'm gonna select that folder that I renamed to Sonic Mania and save. You should get this message, PKG exported. Okay, 
Now, if your game has an update file, then you want to repeat the same step that I just showed you. And also make sure to save it in the same folder with the game file. Now, let's go ahead and exit out. Now, we are back in our FPPS4 folder. Let's go back and we're going to go ahead and reopen our launcher. And if you did everything correctly, you should see your game displayed here. Now this emulator really doesn't have that many options to play around with. If you come up here to settings, as you see, these are the only settings we have to play around with. I'm going to leave everything at the default settings because it works fine. Close. To load up your game, just go ahead and click on the game. Now if you look over here to the right, you'll see that you have the option to enable a lot of different hacks and every game will have their own unique hacks. I'm not gonna select any of them. I'm gonna go ahead and click Run FPPS4. As for your controller, this emulator only supports X input, so you can use your Xbox controller, but you cannot use a PS4 controller. And your buttons will be mapped out by default. Now remember, this emulator still has a long way to go as far as development, and right now you will only be able to run about 80 games, all being smaller titles or indie games. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one.